Good morning, everybody. How are you? I am so glad to be here with you. It's an honor and a joy to see all of you here today. You look, listen, you're the best looking people I've seen today. You're way better looking than that first service. I'm just telling you. I'm just kidding, kind of. I want you to tell somebody around you right now, say, you're the best looking person I've seen today. Tell them, you're the best looking person I've seen today. Looking fine. A few weeks ago, we began a series called From the Heart. In week one, we talked about how do we look forward to the future without fear? Uh, week number two, we looked at how can we worship God in the midst of a crisis? Today, we're going to wrap up the series talking about how do, we, how, how do we expect the best in our lives, even though we're going through pain, even though we're going through challenges in life? How can you expect the best? How many of you could use your faith to be lifted today just a little bit? Amen. How many of you say the person beside you really needs their faith lifted a bunch today? Yeah, okay, so we're in the right place, all right. So, the opening scripture says it all for me. Here it is, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Let's read it out loud. Ready, go. Faith assures us of things we expect. Faith assures us of the things we expect. If you're going to summarize expecting the best, I would say it's the one word, faith. Faith is expecting the best. Somebody said, well, wait a second. I, I, I think you're just trying to talk about positive think, about optimism. No. Now, I will tell you this, I'd rather have a positive thinking person than the alternative. How about you? I don't like to be around a bunch of negative people, but I'm not talking about positive thinking because positive thinking in itself is very limited. I could put you out in the middle of a snowstorm in nothing but your pajamas, and you could do all the positive thinking you want. I'm not cold, I'm not cold, I'm not, you're gonna die. <laughs> so it's not positive thinking. It's not wishful thinking. Expecting the best is not wishful thing. Well, I just wish, I just wish that I wouldn't have any problems in life. Well, good luck. You've already had problems. That's not going to happen. It's not wishful thinking. I heard about this wife. Her husband was missing, so she took a neighbor. They went down to the police station, and the policeman, policeman said, hey, what, is he, what does he look like? The wife said, well, he's 35 years old. He's six foot four. He has dark eyes, dark wavy hair, an athletic build, weighs 185 pounds. He is soft-spoken, and he is so good to our children. The next-door neighbor protested and said, your husband's five foot four. He's bald. He's chubby. He has a big mouth. He's mean to your kids. The wife said, yes, but who wants him back? I want a new guy. Expecting the best is not wishful thinking. I brought a, a definition about what I mean, that expecting the best is faith. Here's the definition, put up on the screen. Expecting the best. It is the confident assurance that God is in control of the future and that he plans what is best for my life because he loves me. That's what it means to expect the best. And that definition is based on this, this uh, psalm, Psalm 32 and 8. It says this, and I want you to read this out loud. Let's put it up on the screens. Ready, go. I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I'll advise you, and I'll watch over you. I want you to underline that phrase, the best pathway for your life. Because here's what you've got to understand. God's plan for your life, the pathway in front of you, is customized. It's unique. Your pathway for life is not based on somebody's pathway for life beside you or around you. God has a pathway that's best for you, and God says this. If you'll learn to trust me, if you'll learn to accept my love for you, I'm gonna lead you down the pathway that is best for your life. And that fills you with optimism and fills you with hope. Now, some of you right now are going, but James, this message isn't gonna help me. Because I can't expect the best. If you knew what my life had been in the past, what I've gone through, the pain, the struggles, it's hard for me to expect the best. For some of you, you're saying, you don't know what I'm going through right now. I mean, I've got some giants in my life. You know, it might be a financial giant. It might be a relational giant. It's hard for me to expect the best. I've got some physical giants in my life. In the last three days, I've heard from three different men who have been diagnosed with prostate cancer in just the last three days. How do you look forward to the future with expectation and hope when you're facing your giants? Well, you do it the same way David did. 
See, David was, was a man who expected the best even when he faced his giant. Remember Goliath? That nine foot and nine inch tall behemoth? David is 17 years old and he said, hey, I'll take him on. Bring it. How could he have that kind of faith? I mean, everybody else was saying, that man, that giant is so big, there's no way we're gonna hit him. David said, he's so big, how can I miss? It's perspective, it's how you look at your giant. If you do these four things I'm gonna share with you right now, you can expect the best no matter what you're going through right now. So here we go. The first thing, if you're taking notes, jot this down. How to expect the best from the book of Psalms. Number one, jot it down. Tune into God every single morning. Tune into God every morning. In other words, before you talk to anybody else, you talk to God. You, you start your day with God. That's going to make you a person every day of optimism and of hope, a person of faith. That's David's first secret of optimism. Psalms 5 and 3, this is what David said. In the morning, everybody say in the morning. In the morning. Not in the evening. Not in the afternoon. In the morning, oh Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. This last week, if you're reading along in the Bible reading program, you read this in Psalms 88, uh, 13. David says, every morning I will pray to you. Every morning, I'm gonna cry out to you. It's in the morning. Where does David get his spirit of expectation? He gets it from starting off his day with God. Before he talks to anybody else, he's talking to God. Now, this thing of being an optimist and thinking the best about the future is more natural for some of us. Don't raise your hand, but, but how many of you tend to be more of an optimist? Some of us tend to be more of a mm, pessimist. We tend to see the glasses half full and uh, we kind of connect with that theologian Eeyore, the donkey, uh, Winnie the Pooh. Have you ever, ever seen, you remember Eeyore, right? Just, just in case you're kind of wondering, do I connect with Eeyore or not? I, I brought a few examples. Let's watch Eeyore for just a second. <laughs> If it is a good morning, we try to help. However, yeah, now, did I get your tail back on properly, Eeyore? No matter. Most likely lose it again anyway. Poor dear. You know, I may have just the thing. Up, up, up you go. <laughs> there you are. It's an awful nice tail, Kanga. Much nicer than the rest of me. It's not much of a tail but I'm sort of attached to it. Not much of a house. Just right for not much of a donkey. Might take a day or two, but I'll find a new one. End of the road. Nothing to do. And no hope of things getting better. Sounds like Saturday night at my house. <laughs> no, no looking around the room right now. Just eyes up here for a second, all right? How many of you tend to be like Eeyore in the morning? You just kind of wake up grouchy. How many of you wake up grouchy? How many of you just let her sleep? <laughs> some of us wake up in the morning and we go, good morning, Lord. And then some of us wake up in the morning and go, good Lord, it's morning. <laughs> It's funny how God will put those two people together in marriage, too. And well, good Lord, it's morning. Good morning, Lord. Shut up. Now, for those of you who feel a little bit sluggish in the morning, you're not quite as optimistic and expecting the best, you're kind of cranky, I want to give you a few suggestions. Number one is maybe go to bed a little bit earlier. I'm just saying. If you have to get up in the morning to an alarm clock, that's your body telling you you're not getting enough sleep and you can't be optimistic if you're sleep deprived, right? And then you wake up to an alarm clock and you wonder why you start off your day alarmed. 
alarmed and you're you know you're stu- you're shocked you're stunned and so you wake up the, in the morning and yet the the uh, um, psychologists say medical professions say that the first 10 minutes of the day is setting the tone for the rest of the day but you're starting it off with an alarm clock just a suggestion get a little bit more sleep go to bed a little bit earlier the second thing is don't turn on the morning news Mm, preach you get up in the morning the first thing you do is what you turn on bad morning America (laughs) then you watch the local news which is always gory because if it bleeds it leads then you scroll through Facebook OMG it's like you know someone is constantly vomiting out their and you're reading oh bless his heart you're filling your mind full of that negative stuff then you get in your vehicle, then you go to school or go to work and you listen to talk radio. Now that's uplifting. And then you wonder why the first part of your day you're just not feeling so swell. You're not feeling so optimistic. How about this? Here's an idea. Why not start the first part of your day with good news rather than bad news? Because what's gonna happen is this. You're gonna start off your day tuning into God. And you got a good night's sleep, you get up and the next morning you're, you're tuning into God's word. That brings me to the third thought and that's simply this. Start your day off with worship. When you start off your day, download some music. I'm talking about some uplifting, love Jesus vibe. You know, my jam is I got Jim Ranger going or Lydia or Vow to One or I got Elevation Music going and, and I'm jamming for the first 30 minutes of my morning and I'm feeling, oh my gosh, I love you Jesus. Amen. What happens to your soul? Man, you're ready to go. Then you spend 20 to 30 minutes in the scriptures and the word because the word is God talking to you and you wash your mind and your soul with the word. All of a sudden, you go into your day, you're feeling dynamic, you're feeling optimistic and hopeful. Why? Because you've trained your mind and your soul to think of God and you're filling your soul with good stuff. And what happens is, psychologists, medical professions say that endorphins are released into your brain. And you start feeling good. Man, I'm feeling good today. Yeah, what happened is you got your soul, your spirit in alignment, and then your body's lining up with your soul and your spirit. So I would suggest that you start your day off with worship, get a little more sleep, tune into God, some good news rather than bad news. So that's the first thing, tune into God every morning. Secondly, if you want to expect the best, think on God's promises throughout your day. You start off your day tuning into God, but then throughout the day, you're thinking on the promises of God. You're thinking about what God has promised to your life. This is the second secret to David's optimism. He tuned into the promises of God. The Bible tells us that that David practiced this even when his days were very difficult. Psalms 119.95, let's read this out loud. Ready, go. Though the wicked hide along the way to kill me, I will quietly keep my mind upon your promises. This is a king. This is the president and people trying to assassinate him. He says, and even during those days, I'm going to quiet my mind. How? By putting my mind on the promises of God. Because I'm going to need throughout my day these promises of God to quiet my nerves to quiet the worry, the, the stress in my life. I, I gotta focus in on God's promise. Psalms 119, 11, David said this. I bank your promises in the vault of my heart. I bank the promises of God in the vault of my heart. Here's a question. How are you going to recall the promises of God throughout your day? You have to store it in your mind, in your heart. You have to think about it. You have to meditate in the word of God day and night. Here's what the scripture says. The Bible says meditate in the word day and night and you will make your way successful. If I got my mind and my soul meditating, dwelling on what God has promised to me, it's gonna change the way I look at life because I'm not basing my life on somebody trying to assassinate my character at work. I'm basing my life on what thus saith the Lord. I've got the promises of God I'm leaning into. I'm banking the promises of God into my life. Here's the truth. In your day, you're gonna hit some tough spots. And you won't have the time to 
pull out a Bible and pull out some scriptures and, and read and write them down, right? So what do you do? You have to bank them in the vault of your heart. You have to memorize scripture. When I was a little boy, my mom and dad taught me these two things, and I'm so grateful, because if there's one secret, one main secret to any success I've had in life, I believe it's what I'm about to tell you. I really believe this. Because the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he, or she. My mom and dad taught me, as, as a little boy, said, James, you've got to get the word of God in your heart. So they taught us kids to memorize the scripture. And when I got up to around 13, 14 years old, I memorized the entire book of John. That's crazy when I think about it now. But I washed my mind with the word as a little boy and I memorized these scriptures and I began to meditate in the word. Now you fast forward all these years and I've practiced this now for 40 some odd years. I every day meditate in the word. How do I do that? We can go online, we show you how on our website. We do the, the soap across it. You read the Bible, then you do the soap. That's meditating in the word. And then how do, you, how do you memorize scripture? Here's how I do it. Well, for one thing, nowadays I do it, it's electronic. You know, on my, on my phone and on my computer, on my screensaver, I have promises of God. I have one there right now. Psalms 145, verses three through six. Why? because this is our 30th year anniversary and the Lord says, in this year I'm to tell of the great miracles of God. So every day I see this, it's reminding me, tell of the greatness of God, tell of the greatness of God, right? But in the old days, back when I was a little younger, I used to memorize scripture a little bit different. I'd take a three by five card, this is one of them. I just pulled this one out, I have stacks of them. And this was on peace, the theme of peace, why? Because 20, 30 years ago, I dealt with a lot of anxiety. I had panic attacks. And I had to learn to meditate on the word of God, the promises of God on peace, right? So I wrote these peace scriptures down and I'd put it on my, my bathroom mirror and while I was brushing my teeth, I would look up and I'd read the scriptures and I'm praying the scriptures and I'm saying them over and over again until I memorized them. And here's what happens, watch this, I'm so, show you. I just brush my teeth, John, 7, John 14, 27. Jesus said, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give isn't fragile like the peace the world gives, so don't be troubled or afraid. Say that five times and see what ha happens to your anxiety level. It's gonna go pshh. So you get the word of God in your heart and you meditate on the scripture and you memorize the scripture and then throughout your day, what's happening? The Holy Spirit is recalling those scriptures to your mind and it changes your soul. It changes your outlook and that's how you can expect the best not the worst. Amen. So throughout the day, focus in on God's word, the promises of the Lord to you. And this is what's gonna happen. Here's what's gonna happen. Hebrews, Hebrews 10, 10, 23. It says, Let, let's keep a firm grip. Everybody say firm grip. Firm. A firm grip on the promises that keep us going. He will always keep his word. Amen. So step one, you wanna be a, a person of expectation and believing the best and hoping for the best, you gotta tune into God every morning. Then you gotta you know, take in the promises of God all day long. And then thirdly, jot this down, you wanna talk with other believers. You wanna talk with other believers, faith-filled believers. This is what David did. David refused to have a bunch of negative people around him. He refused to have people around him that didn't believe the best about God and about life. Psalms 119, 63. Let's all read out loud. Ready, go. I'm a friend and companion of those committed to living by your rules. If you're gonna expect the best, you gotta hang out with people that are expecting the best about life. So let me ask you, who, who are you hanging out with these days the most? Who is your inner circle? Because the people closest to you is who you're going to become like. If you hang out with cranky, sarcastic, cynical, negative people, you're gonna catch their virus because it's like a cold. And you're gonna go, oh, I don't know why I feel so bad today. I feel so negative because you've been hanging with Miss Cranky. On the other hand, 
If you hang out with people who have faith and hope and optimism, they believe the best, not the worst, and you keep hanging out with them, you're gonna catch their virus, their cold, and you're gonna begin to look at life a little bit different. Now listen, I believe this with all my heart, because I used to allow myself to hang with cranky people, negative people, and I'd give a vision for the church, and ah, bah, bah humbug. Who do you think you are? That will never happen. After a while, I realized, man, they were raining on my parade. Every time I turned around, they're raining on my parade. Guess what? They're not on my inner circle no more. Amen. Why? Because you become like who you hang with. Your friends are like the buttons on an elevator. They will take you up or they will bring you down. You can't soar with the eagles if you're running with the turkeys. Come on, James, you're preaching now. That's good stuff. <laughs> right, Ken? You gotta hang with the right people. Faith-filled people. Some of you, seriously, some of you this week need to change some friends. Listen, keep a couple of negative people as a ministry. All right? Goodness gracious. You gotta hang out with people who are gonna encourage you. That's why the Bible says this in Hebrews, Hebrews 10, 25, let us not give up the habit, the habit of meeting together. Instead, let us what? What does encourage mean? It means to give courage. So don't quit hanging out with believers who are going to encourage you. The fact is, you need more VIPs than VDPs. I've been saying this for years, and I believe it. VIPs. VIPs are very inspiring people. VDPs are very draining people. They're the Eeyores of life. And if you have more VDPs than VIPs, it's going to drain your emotional battery and you're going to feel bad. <laughs> now, here's the good news. The good news is, is if you get around enough VIPs, you can actually transform yourself from an Eeyore to somebody positive and hopeful. Remember earlier when I talked about Eeyore? Did you know that the same voice actor that plays Eeyore is the same voice actor that plays uh, Optimus Impact uh, for Transformers. That's him right there. So think Optimus Impact, right? Prime. Prime, thank you. Thank you very much. Dang it. I am thinking about Saturday Impact. Thank you. Thank you, y'all in my brain. Listen, that right there is the leader of the Transformers. He's hopeful. He's positive. He's, he's optimistic. So it's Optimus Prime. So right? Here's what I'm trying to say. You can be transformed. <laughs> you can be transformed from Eeyore to Optimus if you will simply surround yourself with enough VIPs. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Ooh, this is good. This is good, man. I, if, I hope you're liking it, but I do. I want to challenge you. Really think through who are you hanging with. In five years, you will become the books you read and the people you associate with. Psalms 37.4 says, keep company with God and his people and get in on the best. You want the best? Get in with God and his people. So let's review how to expect the best. Tune into God every morning. Think on God's promises throughout the day. And then talk with other believers. And one more, jot this down. Trust in God's love when things look bad. Trust in God's love when things look bad. That is David's fourth secret to optimism. When times are really getting tough and he's getting discouraged and dealing with depression... He chose to trust in God's love. Look at what David said here. In fact, let's read it out loud. Psalms 42, 11. Ready? Go. Oh, my soul, don't be discouraged. Don't be upset. Expect God to act. For I know that I shall again have plenty of reason to praise him for all that he will do. Watch what happens. Because some of you are there right now. Some of you today come to this gathering and you're in a dark space. You're in a dark space. You're dealing with some very tough stuff in your life. It's dark, it's bleak. What do you do? David said this. He said, I will, 
I, I, I'm gonna expect God to act. How? By remembering what he already did in my past and by then believing again it's gonna happen again. God is saying to some of you, and I don't know who you are, but you're in a dark space and you're in a place where it's really easy to give into depression or discouragement. But today God is saying to you, I want you to remember, remember what I did for you in the past. I've been a good, good father to you and I build you out before and guess what? I'm going to do it again. Expect God to act for you. According to your faith, it will be done to you. According to your expectations, it will be done to you. You get the blank check from God, the creator of heaven and earth, the sovereign, and he says you get to fill that check by your expectations. And God says simply this, listen, if you expect me to act, here's how you can do it. Know that I love you. Listen, some of you started to, you started to doubt God's love for you. God sent me here to tell you God's absolutely crazy about you. He loves you so much. And with that love, he already sees your first day and your last day on earth. He has a plan for you, the best pathway for your life. And God says, if you would just simply get to know me and trust me more, you will begin to expect the best because I want what's best for you. <laughs> I want you to listen right now to a couple in, in our New Life family that is experiencing this expecting the best in the middle of some very challenging times. Let's watch the screen. Yeah, so our journey began then in 2003. We got plugged in to celebrate recovery. Uh, throughout the years, we got to know the staff. We got to know people here. And um, we both got, were able, got an opportunity to go through the school of ministry. Um, I became an usher. Um, we helped out with celebrate recovery. Um, we were involved in many ministries and um, going through that time was just great. It was, it was awesome. The Lord was really, really using us. He had really transformed our lives and He had really um, allowed us to see his, his love and share His love. We came to kind of a rough patch um, that kind of got rougher. Um, not sure exactly what happened, but it was, I, I, I want to call it, it was a slow fade. And I think things from my past had started to surface inside of me. I had a relapse and um, kind of lost everything. Um, lost all my hope, lost, uh, about to lose my family, about to lose my wife. I felt ashamed. Um, I had let people down, I had let my family down. But for some reason or another, I would find myself in church on Sundays and we knew that the only hope for us was through Jesus Christ. So we kept pushing through. Um, we had an awesome team that stuck by our side. Um, they still became part of our home group, of our life group. Um, they never stopped loving us. They never stopped um, showing us grace. And um, experiencing that, we seen Jesus through them, through their actions. We still have our Bible study. We have a home group. We have many that come. We have worship night. We have taco night. We have, um, we're taking an outing to the beach this weekend. The guys are going camping. We've really become a family. Um, God has not only restored, but he's exceeded. He has just continued to grow. It was that, that when you talk about that little seed, of, that mustard seed of faith, it was planted and it had taken root. The enemy tried to come and try to pull it out, but God had planted it in there. And there was, a, there was a season of drought and there was a season of famine, but God was restoring things. God brought more to than we could ever imagine. And speaking about our lives is not speaking to boast about ourselves, but it's to speak about boasting about the things of God because it's been Him that's got us through everything. And the only thing that we have to give and share is everything that God has given us and that the enemies try to take away to encourage others that they can make it too. As Jeremiah 29, 11 says, He knows the plans that He has for us. they are plans are prosperous to give us a hope and a future. Um, I tell people, you know, God has never gave up on me, so why should I give up on Him? Mm, 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 mm. The closing verse says it all. It's what I believe with all my heart. Psalms 91, 14. 
I want you to read it with me. Ready, go. I'll get you out of any trouble. I'll give you the best of care. If you only get to know, trust me. God is saying to you, he's saying to me right now, if you only get to know me a little bit better, you only trust me a little bit more, I'm going to get you out of the trouble you're in, and I'm going to give you the best of care. You can expect the best. Let's pray. Would you bow your heads? The Spirit of the living God is here. The Spirit of Jesus is whispering to your heart. Listen to what he says. God got you here today to slow down long enough to whisper to you because he loves you. He loves you. Let that sink into your heart. The Father, the source of life, the creator of heaven and earth loves you. In order to expect the best, what is God asking you to do more of? That's what he wants you to commit to right now in this prayer. Maybe it's to tune into God every morning. Some of you need to make that choice right now in your prayer. Say, Jesus, I, I want to spend more time with you in the early part of my day. I, I commit, with your help, over these next seven days, to worship you in the first part of the day. To read the word and let the word read me. To tune into you, Jesus. To tune into you, God. For some of you, it's to think on the promises of God throughout the day. Tell Jesus right now, say, Jesus, I want to memorize more scripture. I want to meditate in your word day and night so I can make my way successful. So I can have peace of mind. Maybe God's telling you, you got to get around some more believers, some VIPs. Maybe you've been just, your view is just skewed right now because you're just hanging with some folks that are not thinking godly. They're not thinking positive. They're not thinking God's ways. Tell Jesus right now, Jesus, bring some people around me this week that will build up my faith and build up my hope and my expectation. Help me, Lord, maybe even to distance myself from some very negative, skeptical, and even ungodly people. And I believe that there are some of you here today that God is saying in a fresh way, trust in my love when things look bad because you're going through a, a really bad time, a dark time. And I think God would want you to say to him right now, in this moment, in your heart, just say to him, say, Father God, I want to trust you more. I want to trust your love more, that you really do love me no matter what I'm going through. I trust you. I trust your love. The Spirit of God is moving in your heart. Just give yourself, surrender yourself to God right now.